So about 12 years ago, my wife performed in a church pageant in New York. And she really wanted to go back and watch the pageant again. And I wanted to go with her too. And we've always talked about going back, uh, but we just never seemed to have been able to agree on a time that would be good for us and our family and everything. But the pageant that she performed in was now closing. And so it gave us an opportunity to head off to New York. Every time I travel, I like looking for Mustangs, no matter where we are. Uh, you know, I've uh, gone down to Mexico and seen a couple there. I've seen them in Paraguay when I was down there for a little while. I saw some when my wife and I went to Hawaii, and I'm going to try to make stories about all those too. But anyway, um, headed to New York, I knew that there were a bunch of Mustangs there. Of course, there's going to be Mustangs anywhere in the United States. But there are a handful of Mustangs that I know of that are there because I follow these guys on Instagram. For example, this one right here, 2004 Competition Orange Terminator Cobra, belongs to Terminated underscore G on Instagram. I follow him and he follows me. We've talked back and forth a little bit. So I knew he was in New York. And here's a big group of friends uh, that he's with. Uh, Red Mach 1, another Competition Orange Coyote and a Blue Coyote, it looks like. And uh, this other car here, a Turbo 2 Valve, that's his name on Instagram, and I follow him, True Blue GT, like my bullet, but a GT, and uh, I knew that these guys were out there in New York, um, I didn't know exactly where they were, but I was keeping my eyes open for any Mustangs that I could find out there, because I just love looking for cars in different places. So my wife and I decided to take the Yellow Mach 1, and we headed down to Vegas, this is us at In-N-Out, having a good hamburger before we got to the airport and driving to the airport you know here's good old Las Vegas with uh, all the different attractions and then we left the Mach 1 here at the airport parking lot I had been planning to take the yellow Mach 1 on this trip and I had a lot of things I'd just done to the car if you've been watching the videos and I had it all back together just in time to go down there and it was really fun um, and so we got to uh, New York and rented this turbo Volkswagen Beetle and my wife laughed when she saw what the car was. When we went to Hawaii, we rented a Prius. And looking back, uh, I noticed that you could rent Scat Pack Challengers and SS Camaros. So I wish we would have rented one of those because there were a lot of open roads to drive around uh, in upstate New York where we went. I caught a glimpse of a true blue V6 Mustang, but it was really quick at a stoplight. But this was the real first Mustang that I saw besides that one that I actually got a glimpse of. And then when we went back, I got another better look at it and was able to take a picture. It looks like a 69 Fastback. It looks like a Mach 1, but I don't believe the Mach 1 came in that color. Um, but anyway, it's uh, I could be wrong. But anyway, it looked like it was in really good shape having been uh, outside I believe it's probably kept in that garage because the other cars there are so rusted out and terrible I'll show you some pictures of them later but this was the first Mustang I came across and this was just sitting outside on the outskirts of the little town of Palmyra where we were headed to watch the pageant and spend a couple days then as we were going down some back roads way out in the middle of nowhere I saw a house that had this gravel driveway and this sonic blue 03 Mustang GT sitting there and I was really excited to see this car I got as close as I could without trespassing I wanted to go knock on the door and talk to the owners um, after looking at the car very closely and getting a couple pictures from where I was I noticed that it was a 2003 Sonic Blue GT with the premium package which would include the 99 and 01 style chrome wheels and the interior upgrade package so you can see the big headrests in there those are the same headrests that are on the 01 Cobra the 01 Bullet the uh, 0304 Mach 1 if it came with the interior upgrade package and the 0304 Cobras they were also offered on some of the GTs like the uh, 40th anniversary edition GTs and uh, these GTs here that were the premium package cars so I really liked this car. It was in great shape. It looked like it was all stock. The ride height, everything was stock. I really wanted to talk to the owner and make a video just about this car, but this is as close as I could get, and we were in a little bit of a hurry as we were on vacation to go to different places. But I really liked seeing that car. So as we got into the small town of Palmyra, where the church sites are, there's a lot of historic sites of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's such a small town, and yet there was this performance shop right here called Boosted Creations. 
and they had a lot of, um, you know, neat cars there, like Subarus and uh, Volkswagen GTIs and Evos and all sorts of cars like that. But of course, as um, we went around the building, you could see what interested me more was this 2001 to 2003 GT. And by the looks of it, um, it was supercharged or turbocharged. It was probably a Vortec or a uh, pro-charged car, maybe even a Novi uh, car, but it did have boost gauges in the window right there on the pillar gauges, the A-pillar. Um, it had um, some Cobra Terminator style wheels that were black, uh, really nice looking exhaust system, t tinted taillights, uh, the stripes that I wasn't really crazy about, and I noticed that they had changed it to the 99 to 2000 headlights in it, I'm sure the original headlights were all fogged over and they replaced them with those because they looked nice. Uh, a lot of people like the darker look that the 01 to 04 GTs had, or V6s, any of the 01 to 04 cars had. I noticed they also had a Mach 1 chin spoiler, and those hood stripes were similar to the ones that would be on the Spring Edition 2000 GTs. Similar, but I don't think they were the same, and they would be the wrong year, so I don't believe they came with the car. But anyway, uh, it had a ginormous wing on the back, and I believe, according to one of my friends on Instagram, he said that was a Roush wing that had a couple pieces missing. So it was a really interesting look for the car, though, with the tinted taillights and the, the wing and the Cobra wheels and everything on it. Here's another shot of that wing, and you can see some of these other cars in the background, like the uh, BMW there. But that was a really cool car to see, just in the middle of, of this tiny little town in uh, upstate New York. As I drove around, we saw this blue coyote. It was pretty fun to see, 13 or 14. But as we were going through Palmyra, I saw this tiny glimpse of laser red. And I knew what it was, and I was pretty sure I saw what I thought I saw. And it was this 99 Mustang GT. And it was parked behind a truck. It was in the side of a shop, like uh, it had been worked on. And coming up closer, I was able to pull into the parking lot and get these pictures of the car. And it was uh, pretty run down. I don't think it was running for a very long time. It looked like the transmission was out, maybe even the engine. You can tell by the ride height. But looking at the wheels, I noticed how much rust there was on the wheels themselves, not, let alone the brakes and the brake calipers. And laser red doesn't do very well in the sunlight. Uh, it fades pretty bad. This one looked like it was pretty toasted. Here's the, the spoilers faded almost completely white. But it was a 99 Mustang GT, and I really like these cars. As a matter of fact, the very first Mustang that I bought with my brother was a 97 V6 and there was a red GT just like this sitting on the lot for twenty thousand dollars and there's no way we could have afforded it so seeing this car took me back to that GT it was actually a 2000 that was on the lot but it was the same color same spoiler everything was basically identical except for the badging but looking underneath this car I could tell it was starting to rust out it wasn't absolutely terrible yet but you could see that um, the the underbody is starting to get some pretty good holes in it and this is this is a shot of the gas tank between the gas tank and the rear bumper and looking under there there's quite a bit of rust I ha I've rarely seen any new edge Mustangs with this much rust because where I'm from in the desert the cars don't rust like this um, all the cars that I've owned were from Las Vegas or Arizona and they're non rusted cars so, looking under there, I thought, man, this poor car probably doesn't have much of a chance um, because it's already getting quite ruined, but uh, you never know who's going to fix them and save them. As a matter of fact, the back seat was full of parts. It had a lot of parts inside, so I believe the engine was out of this car. And the value of these are so low now that um, it would take the right person to want to buy the car and put it back together. But anyway, here's another shot of the GT and, of course, the 35th anniversary badge. When I was in high school, I rode the bus to school every day, and I didn't have my V6 Mustang yet. And there was a kid at school that had a 99 Laser Red V6 Mustang. And I remember going up and looking at it, looking at the fender badge just like this, and just drooling over it and thinking, oh, I'd do anything just to have that running pony. I love the Mustang. 
I really like that 35th anniversary badge. So to see one on a Mustang here sitting in the back lot somewhere where it's neglected is really difficult. It takes me back to a time where I really love those cars. I, I love them now very much, but it's, uh, it's hard to see something that I had wanted so bad just sitting like that. And the last Mustang I saw on the trip was this looked like Tropic Green 2002 Mustang V6. And it was just parked actually right next to the shop where that Laser Red GT was. And so interestingly enough, I did not see very many Mustangs on this trip. I thought that I would see a lot more than I did. I did take a picture of this ad that was in a small supermarket where we were uh, about a car show. And you could see right there, there's a blue uh, 96 GT, it looks like. Um, that's advertising for a car show, a local car show. And so it was fun to see that on the wall of this small grocery store. But I really didn't see very many Mustangs there. And I know that the uh, SN95 and the New Edge Mustangs are getting older and they're getting ruined, especially in a climate of super rust and everything. Uh, but I thought I would see a lot more than I did, but I really didn't see many. I saw this cool Trans Am and it looked like it was in great shape, especially after looking at these trucks. We followed this truck for a little bit and man, the rust on it was so terrible, it was just eating clear through it. I had just never seen this kind of rust having been from the desert where I live uh, my whole life. And so it was so interesting to see. And when I would see trucks like this that were so rusted out and then I would see like that Trans Am or the other Mustangs, I thought, wow, those other cars are in such great shape. Um, compared to what's driving around on the roads. So I know a lot of people put their cars away in the winter and everything. So let me know how, uh, what you do with your cars. I know a lot of people put them away for the winter and they don't even drive them very much throughout the year and the miles stay lower on them because of that, but they don't get to drive them year round like I do. So anyway, this was my little trip to New York and it was real fun to go and see a handful of Mustangs. I really liked seeing the ones that I did see and, uh, I was surprised that there weren't as many. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll add this to my Mustang Stories list. Subscribe to the channel and help it grow if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.